Welcome to the Pittsburgh Nerd Podcast Vlog. I'm Sean, I'm your host, and uh, it's Wednesday, so um, this is usually where we kind of talk about random subjects, and uh, a subject we didn't get to talk about, well first off, I want to thank the folks at the Nerd Corner um, for letting us record the podcast there last week. Uh, we're going to be recording again sometime next month, I'm going to set that up with Ian, and then we'll, uh, we'll announce that on the show. Um, when I set that up with Ian in, in the Nerd Corner. But um, I also want to thank everybody who came out. Uh, Stork and his wife, uh, Beaver. Um, oh, God. Stork and his wife, Peacock. Um, Tim, uh, the otter and, and beaver. Uh, Sarah, the hummingbird. Super fan Thad. Uh, it was a great showing. Uh, we can't thank you enough for coming out. We had a great time. It was good seeing everybody. Um, and uh, again, I can't thank the the nerd corner enough for putting up with our bullshit. Uh, so thank you very much for that. We, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, but on to, um, you know, again, one of the things I do is I'll, I'll search out subjects during the week to talk about on the podcast. And a lot of times we don't get to every subject I've found. And one of the subjects I found that I thought was kind of interesting. I wanted to talk about with Ian, uh, but we didn't get to was, um, apparently, uh, Disney, who owns the rights to the Roger Rabbit, I don't want to call it a franchise, but the, the movie, the characters, um, they're creating a ride, or they, they've created a ride with the Roger Rabbit characters, and uh, the, um, I can't believe I can't think of her name now. I was just thinking it two seconds ago as I was uh, getting ready to set this up, but, um, Roger Rabbit's wife, Jessica Rabbit. That's it. Good Lord, that's I can't believe I forgot that. But uh, so apparently they've um, in Mickey's Toontown, uh, they're 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 doing something with this, and they've quote unquote desexualized her. Uh, they've put her in a trench coat, um, and. Fans are very, very upset because apparently she's being a detective. She's looking for Roger. And uh, fans are very, very upset about this. And I don't get it. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, you know, it's... It, I understand the desexualization of, of cartoon characters. Um, you, know, you go back earlier this year... Uh, Warner Brothers caught a ton of heat for desexualizing Lola Bunny. Um, you know, if you go back to the original Space Jam movie, you know she was in a crop top and short shorts, and uh, was clearly meant to be a a twelve year old fantasy bunny. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, that's what it was. Um, and in the new movie, you know she's wearing, um, you know her, her shorts come down to her knees, and and she's wearing a a full length shirt. Uh, and people were upset by this. And I don't understand why. Um, you know, ruined my childhood. How dare you? And the same thing with with Jessica Rabbit. They're they're kind of like, how dare you? Uh, you know, take this. And I mean, let's face fast. Jessica Rabbit. The Who Framed Roger Rabbit movie was aimed as much as for adults as it was for children. And Jessica Rabbit was that supposed to be that fifties bombshell that you know that that, that sexy pinup. That you know, and the femme fatale of, the, of like the, that fifties vibe, and and you know, and w you throw in Kathleen Turner's voice at that time, and you know, you have you know a cartoon that just oozed sex. I mean, and she even you know, it's acknowledged throughout the movie. She even has the line, you know, "I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way." You know, um, it, it so I. Like, the, what she was created for at that time w was, well, it was a, a cartoon, you know, a movie that was played to children, but was definitely meant for adults. Um, and I, I don't mean that in a in an X-rated way. I, I just mean that in the, the story was more adult-driven than it was kid-driven. I mean, if you, as a child, you could watch that movie and you could get a lot out of it. But, you know, it, the 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 basic story was, you know, it was about adultery and murder, and you know, this wasn't a, 
a kid friendly story. Uh, but at, at the same time, you know, so Jessica Rabbit is drawn, she's designed to be this, this bombshell femme fatale from the 1950s. And she served her purpose in that movie. So I get why Disney would like say, hey, we need to, you know, we're incorporating this into our rides. We need to, for lack of a better term, cover her up, maybe. Um, so I get that. And I and the same thing with Little Bunny. Like, I mean, look, I'll admit, I have a fetish for curvy redheads that goes back to me watching Scooby-Doo as a child. Okay? You throw glasses on them as well, I am. I am all in. You know, I I had a thing for Velma and Wilma Flintstone. So, I get... Like, I... You know, cartoons have always been drawn that way. And, you know, you know oh, you're... And when, when we redesign these characters and we try to make them more child-friendly, less sexualized, people go nuts over that. I don't, you know, like... As long as the character stays true to the character, like who cares? But the people just go nuts over this, and I, like I said, I'm, you know, I'm I'm not gonna sit here and I'm I'm not a, you know, I'm not the best advocate for feminism, uh, you know, or or what a woman goes through or anything like that. But like I, I just I look at the 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 desexualization of cartoon characters, and I kind of say to myself, uh, why why are we fighting this fight? Why 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 are people upset about this? You know. If you really, really want to see Jessica Rabbit that way, you know, go watch the movie. You know, they're not changing the movie. Just, you know, her presentation in the park. Um, yeah, you want to see a little bunny that way, go watch the first Space Jam movie. You know, in the second Space Jam movie, they updated her. You know, sorry. So, it, it's just, it's, it's one of those things where, um, It's an argument people have that I just, I feel like you're dying on the wrong hill. And, uh, you know, whatever, dude. I mean, you know, it, it just, it, it's funny to me that people, like, get so angry over, over this. But they do. And I, I, I just, you know, just gotta say, you know. So, um... That's it for, for nerdy stuff. Uh, kind of real quick, you know, I'm in Pittsburgh. I'm a diehard Steelers fan. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about the Steelers in this town right now. And, uh, you know, particularly about the quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger. And, uh, you know, should he stay or should he go? Should he have gone already? And, um... I'm going to give my opinion on this, and, you know, my opinion is basically this. Is Ben Roethlisberger the same quarterback he was four years ago? No. He's not. He's gotten older. He's had elbow surgery. Um, he, he doesn't he, – he's not as mobile as he was once was. He doesn't have that ability to, you know, improvise plays like he used to. But at the same time, I will say this. The, the woes of the Pittsburgh Steelers do not fall directly on the shoulders of Ben Roethlisberger. Yes, he, he, he threw some bad interceptions. Um, he, he's, you know, is he physically where he needs to be to be a top-tier quarterback? No, he's not. But he's a service quarterback if he had an offensive line. You know... I'm not going to tell you that Ben Roethlisberger is, you know, at the level of Patrick Mahomes or even Tom Brady. I mean, Tom, Tom Brady, I don't, that, that dude has, he has made some sort of pact with the devil to stay at the highest level possible for, you know, Lord knows how long. I, I He is baffling to me, but he's the exception to the rule, you know, um, Every great quarterback has that moment where they're no longer as good as they once were, and, and this is Ben's. Um, 
so don't don't get me wrong when I when I sit here and tell you, you know, he's the problem. He because he is he's a problem. Don't get me wrong, but he's not as big of a problem as that offensive line. I don't care who you put behind that center. It could be Patrick Mahomes. It could be Tom Brady. It could it it it, it could be Johnny Unitas himself. Okay, you, you are not going to be successful. They can't run the ball. Naj, you know, the big thing was well, we're going to get rid of James Conner, and we're going to you know take, use our first round draft pick on Najee Harris, and that's going to solve all of our problems at the running back position. That's going to solve our running game. And the fact of the matter is, the offensive line stinks. This offensive line cannot open holes. Najee Harris was most successful once you got him out in space in the passing game. You you can't run the football. And if you can't run the football, you can't throw the football. It's it's that simple. I mean, this isn't rocket science. And so the problems that the Steelers are having is based on that offensive line. Yes, at some point, probably next year, you're going to have to replace Ben Roethlisberger. Maybe you sacrifice Mason Rudolph. You know, we go a year of that or, you know, Dewey Haskins, but the fact of the matter is that offensive line is the problem. Not the quarterback, not the running back, the offensive line. If you if you had a decent offensive line in front of Ben Roethlisberger, they are probably two and one. They're closer in that Bengals game. They're you know they're, they're not. They are their, their offense is getting destroyed because they can't that offensive line cannot protect and can't push. You put you give them a decent offensive line, Najee Harris is probably giving you eighty to ninety yards a game. You you're getting you know on the ground, you're probably getting um, better you know, down the field you're able to, to throw the ball down the field better because you have more time. You know, everything that you need is based upon that offensive line. And, uh, again, like I'll, I'll tell you now, like again, you know, is Ben Roethlisberger a problem? Yes. Does he have to go after this season? Yeah. But at the same time, I'm going to tell you that, that he is not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is his offensive line, and it needs fixed because I don't care who you have behind center. They, they, they just – this offense would not work no matter who the offensive coordinator is or who's behind center. So – my two cents on the subject. Um, so that's it. That's the uh, the Wednesday rants for the week. Uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, if, you, if you do, hit the subscribe button. Hit that, that notification bell so you know when I post stuff every Wednesday and Saturday. That's always fun and exciting. Um, also remember, we do have a podcast. Uh, that podcast is the Pittsburgh Nerd Podcast. We're on most podcatchers. I believe we're also on, on Spotify, which is exciting news. You can find us on Spotify. And uh, Soka has to get in the picture, doesn't she? <laughs> uh, but you can find us on Spotify now. So we, we are on, we are damn near everywhere you can get a podcast at. Um, just search Pittsburgh Nerd. We're very, very easy to find. And I hope you'll give us a listen, especially this past week. This past week was fun because we had so many people sh you know, on the show give us opinions. It was a good conversation. I think you'll enjoy it. So on that note, the dreamer has awakened.